Big Buddy's gonna give me a hand today. Hey, don't you, don't you, big boy, don't you, big boy. So silly me's been trying to get this loom onto this this motor and um, trying to figure out where all the plugs and that go, looking online, you know, to see if there's a, a diagram to see where it all goes. And um, it just happens so that I have a falcon. So why don't I just look at that? I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get this question, but uh, this is my very dirty 2006 BF falcon. It is a 6 speed manual. It's a XR6 Turbo. Nothing special, really. So I'm trying to find out where this whole loom runs because I don't know whether it runs under or over or around. I know that this Y here is an extension for the throttle body because it used to have a, um, a throttle body relocation kit on it. Um, so, but it should give me enough info, I should be able to see where the loom all runs um, in order to, to get mine on. Just run all the, the plugs and that, I fitted it as best I could. Uh, these are your cam sensors on the back with a head temperature sensor. Uh, these are all your coil, these are your rear four coil um, plugs. So the, the rear four coils run on one separate loom that run up from the back here. Um, that's your transmission stuff that I'm not gonna use, but I'm gonna keep it on the loom. Um, these are injectors. So that's the injector one. That's actually another injector one that needs to come back forwards. So stuff that back around there, come in there. Um, another injector one, another injector one. Then you have these four plugs at the front here. Um, so two of these are your your variable valve timing uh, plugs, and the other two are the other the front two coil plugs. Um, this is all throttle body stuff. So that's one throttle body plug there. There's the other throttle body plug there. There's a map sensor plug down the bottom here. I haven't plugged on yet. And then the rest is all at the front and underneath. So there's your crank angle sensor that just runs on the top of the valley. I was running it underneath before, and then I realised that it actually does go like that. Um, AC plug, there's the pressure switch for power steering, which I won't be running. Uh, that is the rear knock sensor plug, then you have coolant temp and the other knock sensor. Actually no, sorry, that's the oil pressure one there, but that's, uh, I don't actually know what this other one is for, it's definitely an oil one. Might be oil temperature and oil pressure maybe, so figure it out eventually. And then uh, these are your ECU plugs, obviously, and the engine loom plug. Awesome. All right, so that's the loom on next to the sump. Uh, I also need to check the input shaft bearing, bearing, input shaft on the gearbox to make sure that the clearance is gonna be uh, adequate. Um, I've heard a few people say they don't need to with the Castle Main Rod Shop ones, but Face to double check and I might just take a couple mil off of it just to be sure. Another thing I have to do is clean out the engine bay and um, tidy up from the wiring in there. And
make sure everything's good to go. I'm going to basically take out every wire that doesn't need to be in there um, in order to keep things simple. So I'm going to rewire all my spotlights, all the rear of the vehicle because there's a couple, there's a couple spare plugs going to the back because uh, that's all going to get rewired. Um, what else is there in there? So obviously all the heater hoses are going to have to be rerouted around the motor, which is, um, you probably can't see it, but the heater pipe runs on the back here. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to have to cut it on this side because this is the side that the patrol runs on. Um, what else? AC lines are going to get made up and for the power steering, um, I've been tossing up the idea of actually going electric power steering. So the Astra pump uh, off of the Holden Astra, like I think the early 2000s, late 90s, uh, Holden Astra had an electric power steering pump on them and they're, I think they're like three or four wires and they're basically good to go. You'll be in there soon buddy. So I was trying to get the sump on the other day uh, and quickly found out that it won't fit due to this uh, windage tray or uh, what's the word girdle um, that's on the BA motors. So I've um, I've ordered one of these from Ford. It was like seventy dollars for a new windage tray off the FG. So I ordered one of them. I also ordered a, uh, a new O-ring for the, the oil pickup. So this is the girdle off of the BA car. And uh, I needed to purchase this one off of a FG in order to, uh, to fit the FG sump on. It's just slightly narrower uh, and just all the cutouts are all in different places. So I've just loosened all these off, so we'll take that off and bring this one on. All right, so it's time to cut the original engine mounts out. Got my grinder ready to go, so uh, let's get into it. So the engine mounts are all ground off. I've uh, ground that one off there, cleaned it up a little bit, haven't cleaned it up a lot. Here's the barrel ones, they're just sitting on there at the moment, they just do need to take them off and clean them up a bit. But yeah, they're on there, so it's all coming together. So I've got the motor sitting back in here um, and it's almost in the position where it needs to be but uh, the only issue is, which is kind of common with these engine mounts, castle main rod shot ones that is, um, is there's a gap between the chassis and the, um, and the mount. So, so what I'm going to have to do is get some, some plate 
and plate the chassis out uh, and towards the engine mount in order to get that to work. So I'm just gonna measure the gap that's there and uh, we'll get some plate made to size and get that in there. So it's a few days later, I haven't got around to getting any plate yet, but um, I have had a look at some of the wiring there, so um, I'll show you what I've done and uh, we'll get into it. So if you're doing a ZD to barrel conversion, these should be the only wires that you need uh, in the entire loom. Um, I've pulled the entire loom from the original ZD that came through the grommet in the top, which is that hole, which is that hole just there in the back of the firewall. Um, and you can pull that entire loom back through. There is a small loom that does join the two together uh, and you can remove that as well. So this group of connectors here um, are the ones that you'll, you'll need to get the signals off of. Um, all, these, all these ones here. Uh, and all the ones you'll need is the alternator controls, which are not that wire because this has been modified. So they are a, oh, this in there. So, Alternator control is a, uh, a white wire with a green stripe and a, orange, a yellow wire with a red stripe. So that's your alternator control. Um, you will need, this is your AC control, so air conditioner. Uh, that is a thick wire, yellow wire with a black stripe. And we need the coolant temp for your dash. And that is a another red wire, so a yellow wire, the red stripe. But they do go into different plugs, so and you'll, you'll obviously be able to tell all of what these are when you pull them off the motor. But these are the one coloured wires you need off the motor. You do have two temperature sensors and two oil pressure sensors on the uh, on the ZDs. So there's another oil pressure sensor one, but I've just put an X on it, so I know not to use that one. That and the boost sensor. So here we have the starter signal. So starter signal. Where is it? So starter signal is a big thick black wire with a yellow stripe. And you'll also need oil pressure, which is a plain orange wire. That one, uh, and that's the alternator. It well, well, went to the alternator for the earth, um, so we may have to use that still. So these are all the wires that I've stripped out of the loom. So that one is for glow plugs, so we don't need that one. This one here is the uh, alternator cable. These are alternator cables. We're obviously going to have to remake. So all different lengths. So this loom right here is the one that joins between the ZD loom and the loom from the, the fuse box. So that joins from the fuse box into the loom that goes into the firewall. So this end here will go into the, brighten up a bit. So this plug here will go into the ZD loom that goes into the ECU. Um, and this end here is for your um, the originally the, the map sensor, um, boost solenoids, and uh, another another temperature sensor that you don't need. It's all for the for the ZD side of things. You can throw that one out. Uh, and the only other one that was in there was the main starter cable. So we're going to have to remake all them so they can get thrown out. So the loom that all these wires is on is the um, transmission also the transmission loom uh, and originally all these wires ran from here from down the side here they ran up uh, and then all the way around and across the front so all I did was unpick everything off the loom uh, and pull out those individual wires um, I thought it was gonna be a lot harder than it was I thought I was gonna have to muck around with stuff on the ZD loom itself um, turns out I didn't have to so that loom that you just got fed all the way back through, one I'm going to use that grommet hole for, is running the OBD and throttle pedal wires into the cab from the ECU. I need to try and figure out where how to mount a lot of stuff now. So I have 
the electric power steering pump that I've got. I don't know if you guys got me on Instagram, but uh, Ben Ben Keen Official uh, is my an Instagram name. I'll chuck it on the screen here. Um, I have a Astro power steering pump uh, to go on there, and I also need to make a bracket for the alternator and for the little fuse panel box that we've got. So um, the Astro power steering pump is hiding in here somewhere. So here we have the Astro Power steering pump, so I've got to make a bracket up for that somewhere. Um, that was really good, I got like 70 bucks, so that's going to go in there somewhere. If anybody wants any old uh, ZD parts, let me know, there's fucking heaps here. Once again guys, thanks for watching. Uh, in the next episode I'm going to be using HP tuners to remove the security system from the ECU that I have for the bar. Um, yeah, the other thing I'm going to be doing is some of the fuel pump stuff. So I have a Warburg 460 that we're mounting to the fuel sender unit that goes into the, the main tank. Uh, so I'll have some info on that and uh, a little bit more um, on how it all goes together and how you can adapt the diesel fuel tank to the petrol. Um, I know I said that um, the motor should be welded in by now, but uh, the, the dude that's uh, welded in for me has uh, been moving house and doing a few things so he's been a busy person lately so um, he should be uh, he should be free soon so next weekend um, I should be able to get uh, the motor all welded in and uh, and all good to go. Uh, I've also come across a few like clearance issues and little kind of things like that um, regarding like intake manifold and turbo um, so that will be in the next episode uh, once again guys thanks for watching see you on the next one cheers.